Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed the Alfred Wagner song, and that was probably pretty difficult to take notes from. So I put together another little lesson so that you can um, write down your information um, for your Cornell notes from this. Okay, so go ahead and get that stuff ready so that you can take notes. So we're focusing on Alfred Wagner. This is what he looks like. And the theory that he came up with is called the theory of continental drift. So what do we need to know about this? Basically, the theory of continental drift says that the continent started as one big supercontinent, and we call that continent Pangaea. The word Pangaea means all land. So that was just kind of referring to how they all the continents were connected together. So what evidence did Alfred Wagner have? Well, his main piece of evidence was the fact that the continents seemed to fit together like puzzle pieces. And they do. Okay, so this is really what he used to push his theory off the ground. Also, later on, actually, after Arthur Wagner's death, it was found... Um, that there were freshwater reptiles and their fossils were found on completely separate sides of the ocean. So if you look at this Mesosaurus down here, they found fossils of this animal in South America and Africa. They found plant fossils in Antarctica. So they were um, finding plant fossils that was actually a tropical plant in a very cold climate where plants don't survive. And they found similar rock layers on separate continents, such as South America and Africa, showing that they had once been conjoined together and broke apart because those rock layers formed while they were still connected. They also found glacial deposits from glaciers in areas that are now tropical and desert. So although Alfred Wagner had a lot of evidence to back up his theory of continental drift, um, the world of science was still pretty skeptical. They were like, what and how? Could continents that are so completely massive be moved around the globe? They were thinking about what we learned about in force and motion. What kind of force could cause the movement of such large continents? And that was a really good question because Alfred Wagner didn't have the right explanation. He was saying that they moved because of the spin of the Earth's axis. And years later, once we developed more technology and came to um, the concept of seafloor spreading, which you'll learn about next, did it start to explain how the continents had moved. So his idea wasn't wrong. Okay? It was just the how that he didn't really know how to explain. So what you're going to need to know for class, in case you need to go back and review, you need to know who Alfred Wagner is, the theory that he came up with, what evidence that he had and was found to support it, and why his theory was not widely accepted. So make sure you have this information covered, and if you have any questions, make sure you write them down in the question portion of your Cornell notes so that we can talk about it tomorrow in class. All right, you guys have a great night. Go back and watch that Alfred Wagner song again. That was pretty funny. Bye.